So let's go back to high school civics a bit. Remind us in, in layman's terms how the college works. Well, the Electoral College is set up to represent the 50 states. So on election day, when people cast a vote for either Donald Trump or Joe Biden, they are actually casting a ballot for the selection of the Republican or the Democratic slate of electors. So whichever candidate gets the most votes in a state, that determines whether or not the Republican or Democratic slate uh, of electors is chosen. And those are actual people. Um, they're selected by the state party and they will meet at the state capitol in December and cast the official vote for the state. Arizona has 11 votes. What's the draw this year? I mean, we've already seen the maps. If you're trying to get to 270, both candidates would like this state. Yeah, so Arizona is, is considered a battle, battleground state. It's a state that could go either way. Um, a lot of states are reliably Republican or reliably Democratic, and it doesn't make sense for the candidates to campaign there because you know the outcome. But with Arizona, we could go either way. And so it makes sense for both, both candidates to uh, spend money in terms of advertising and coming to the state to, to court voters. We have a census, so it's possible Arizona could pick up a few more votes here in the coming years. Is that correct? Yeah, so the census determines how many um, uh, seats the uh, state has in the House of Representatives and the formula for determining electoral college votes is to add two for the Senate and then add in the House uh, of Representatives. So that gives Arizona currently 11 electoral college votes. The 2020 census will determine whether or not Arizona gets another electoral college vote in another seat in the US House. Um, that will depend on how many Arizonans uh, fill out the census. You've been studying political science for decades now. What are some of the pros and cons of an electoral college system? Well, the advantage uh, to the electoral college system and the reason it's in the Constitution is it reflects the federal nature of the United States. So it reflects the fact that we have 50 states and that these states then um, have a voice in the selection of the of the president. Um, another reason or favorability for the Electoral College is it tends to isolate uh, problems with the election within a single state. So if there's a problem with counting the vote in uh, Pennsylvania, it's not going to affect how the vote is counted in other states. So it, it's more likely to isolate problems with the vote or isolate the need for uh, recounts um, on down the line. There are also some people who uh, favor the Electoral College because they say it, it uh, prevents the, the big cities from dominating uh, the election that lets rural voters also have a voice. And there have been calls for it to be abolished. I mean, how likely would that be? Is it even legal? Well, to uh, entirely abolish the Electoral College would require a constitutional amendment. And that's very difficult. It requires two thirds vote in the House and the Senate and then three fourths of the states to ratify it. That's a very difficult um, high hurdle to overcome. There is a movement uh, among some states to uh, sign on to what is called the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact. And this would be an agreement among the states uh, when they had enough states signed on so they would have the 270 electoral college votes needed uh, to elect the president that regardless of the vote in their particular state, they would have their electors cast the vote for the national popular vote winner. There are now 15 states in the Washington DC have signed on to the compact, uh, but they're still short um, about 74 electoral college votes. And finally, Dr. Norander, there's, there's some speculation that we may not have a winner um, the first week of November, because of a variety of reasons. What do you think the average Arizona needs to know about the college and the voting system that will take place here in just five weeks now? Well, in Arizona, we have the advantage that we've been doing a lot of voting by mail in past elections. So the election officials are very um, well versed in sending out the ballots and getting them back in and counting them. And so Arizona has the advantage over other states where they have not had a lot of mail-in votes before. And so they're trying to sort of re, 
uh, reinvent the, the wheel for their elections. So Arizona is at advantage in that, that factor. All right, Professor Barbara Norinder, a professor of political science here at the University of Arizona. Thank you so much. Thank you.